I know we've all been there, looking, no, searching endlessly for a game to dig our grubby little claws into because the 30 games that we have in our backlog just aren't scratching that itch. Some of them you can't even remember why you bought in the first place. Huh? Maybe out of boredom? As you scroll through the store looking for anything that will catch your eye, you lose two hours of your life when suddenly, boom, you found it. The saving grace to all your problems. You whip it into your cart as fast as you can, press buy, and eagerly await the notification that will let you know it's ready to play. The moment is finally here. You boot it up, rush past the start menu, and get into that sweet, sweet gameplay. And then over the course of several minutes, or even an hour, you come to the slow realization that, oh, wait, this game's shit. We've all been there, right? We've all, we've all been there, not, not just me? Well, that's exactly what happened to a certain someone I know very recently. Oh, okay, you got me. It was me. Hangman's Rope is the game in question here. What looked interesting from the trailer and the promotional material quickly became a farce as I trudged my way through this heap of, I guess you can call it a game? That statement sucked to say, because it was made by a super small team of just two people. But then you have to look at what other games have done in the past. Undertale was made by one person. So was Bright Memory. Hell, even Minecraft, a game that is still around today. So when you look at it like that, it's really no excuse that this game is as basic and underdeveloped as it is. For anyone who has actively followed this channel over the past several years, first of all, you're amazing, and uh, I just think you should know that. You complete me. But secondly, and hang on, I'm about to plug my own channel here. You may or may not remember a review I did on this guy's first game called Eternal Evil. A game that took clear inspiration from the classic Resident Evil games of the past that focused more on puzzles than on action. The developer's name in question here is Vladimir Zoblin, and while I did manage to enjoy Eternal Evil despite how rough it was, it's undeniable that that game did have a lot of enjoyment hampering issues at times. But I will say to his credit, the developer did support Eternal Evil for months after launching it, and he added new content and support in the form of patches that the community members were reporting, and that's very commendable. And plus, honestly, it felt good to support an indie developer that was trying to make his mark on the world. When you look at what one person can do in their spare time now with the technology that they have, it's really remarkable. And I'd be lying if I said it didn't make me feel bad about how I spend my spare time. I mean, what am I doing with my life? Um, uh, anyway, Hangman's Rope has been declared a side project for the small team under Honor Games as a way to fund their bigger projects. And honestly, on paper, that's not really a bad idea. I mean, Portal was just a side project for Valve and now it's one of their greatest known works. So the idea to helm side projects isn't a bad idea in and of itself. But when you have such a small team working on side projects solely to fund their main goals, it opens up the possibility of pushing out undercooked content simply to get money. It's sad to say this, but that's exactly how the experience of Hangman's Rope felt. Does it have some interesting concepts? Yeah, and the atmosphere is decent, so is the setting. But these are mostly as shallow as a puddle. For a game that came after his first big project, it's a shame to see that he didn't even really learn from the mistakes and design errors in his first go. If anything, he added onto the issues that plagued his last game. So the Wild West mesh of gunslinging and horror puts you in the shoes of a guy named Richard. What the fuck, Richard? But anyway, it doesn't really matter because this character has zero personality because he's more or less supposed to be you, the player. You arrive at this outback western town after a train carrying you and only you I guess because no one else is here with you. This train derails leaving you stranded in a cursed town haunted by spirits and zombies. <coughs> it's through this witch that the story unfolds in a pretty unoriginal and bland way. There are some dark themes kind of sprinkled around that stem from real world issues, but these are casually brushed over and forgotten, and that sucks. There's no voice acting and what little writing there is lacks any nuance between the characters. 
something that has carried over from his previous work. Although I will say Eternal Evil had voice acting and it was dreadful. He knows I'm still not over what he did during that mission. So he wouldn't have called me if it wasn't really serious. What the hell is even that? So maybe he did take away something from that game after all. What isn't dreadful here is the gameplay side of things. It's just kind of boring and it lacks any real depth. The map you traverse is very linear, a result of the witch's curse breaking up the ground causing the map to be full of tight walking paths. Traversing these paths with the game zombies, or as I like to call them, cowbies, it doesn't really mesh well because they often block your path. These guys seem to spawn at random too in front of you and walking just 10 steps away will despawn them. Not really sure if this was some kind of memory issue or what this is supposed to achieve, but it is weird. Though the western town can seem open in some areas, there isn't much in the way of exploration unless you want to look for ammo. There's a very specific set of locations you need to go to move the story along, and none of them are all that interesting. Hangman's Rope enforces a shoot from the hip mechanic, meaning you can't use your iron sights, and as the game says, if you're a cowboy, you gotta shoot like one. I think this is a pretty good inclusion because the limitation presented a possible route of stressful encounters while battling a limited ammo supply as foes surround you. But no! Missing a shot is pretty much impossible because the enemies don't even require a skill in accuracy. Most of the game's common cowbies just shamble towards you in generic fashion, offering very little in the way of challenge. Interesting idea, but poor execution. Along with the shoot from the hip restriction, the game utilizes a lantern mechanic which acts as an integral part of the game in the form of a tool and a survival element. Players must use this to explore dark areas like lamps and buildings you can see and most interestingly use it to ward off spirits that just seem to want to hug. Seriously though, I'll give credit where it's due. On the surface, it's a neat idea, but once again, I don't think the right execution was there. The lantern becomes a source of survival when you pair it with bags of phosphorus powder found around the map that will provide you a shield from these guys and also make them susceptible to gunfire. The thing is, the lantern and other light sources around the map require matches to ignite, and if you run out of these matches, you're just kind of beat. I ran out in the final stretch of the game, so I just kind of had to book it past all the enemies, and while that's a viable option, this shouldn't happen, and there's no remedy for using all the matches, and because the game in 2023 doesn't have a brightness lighter, yeah, you heard me. A game in 2023 doesn't have a brightness lighter. This means going into interiors without a light source results in pitch black darkness making these areas entirely impossible to navigate. And this isn't in true horror game fashion where you can still make out slight objects around you like in the latest Amnesia, the bunker, which I'm playing through right now. No, this is like looking for something at the bottom of the ocean where no light exists. For the positives that the lantern tries to represent, it also has a direct conflict with one of the two guns you wield, and that's being the shotgun. Using the lantern requires one hand to be free, which goes hand in hand, literally, with the six shooter. Equipping the shotgun holsters the lantern because the game doesn't let you keep it lit on your person for some reason. The intention was for the lantern to be used strategically and for the player to decide what gun is right for a certain scenario. But igniting the lantern to deal with spirits and then switching to the shotgun to take care of the cowbies puts the flame in the lantern out, making me feel like I just wasted an entire match that were already hard to come by. This game is really based around the lantern because it is used so frequently to deal with dark areas and ghosts, so I just never felt a reason to use the shotgun at all. And that's not even the game's worst issue. Hangman's Rope features three enemy types. These guys, these guys, and don't even get me started on these guys. I hate them! You have the typical zombies, the spirits that don't respect your personal space, and then the bull charging skeletons. All of them have their issues, but the skeletons are far and away the worst offender. They serve two purposes for gameplay. One is to solely deal damage to the player, while the other hits you with a gameplay modifier that slows you down to a crawl for a brief period. Once again, that seems good on paper, 
but there's nothing in this game that even takes advantage of this immobilization. What's supposed to add to the gameplay simply just takes away from it. It doesn't help that the arrival and spawning of these guys is so poorly executed. Oftentimes they emerge from the walls with no warning giving you an impossible window to dodge them, artificially slowing down an already short experience. And that to me says they should have been left out entirely from this game. The Cowbies in their hit detection knows no bounds. These guys have a bad habit of spawning just outside of doorways that you need to get through and there's really nothing you can do here except kill them because they just won't move out of the way. Want to save ammo? Well, you can always use the trusty knife that is entirely useless. They were hitting me through walls and across distances that their physical models couldn't even reach. Oh, and uh, also this happened. What the hell? These guys were inflicting damage to me before I even loaded into the game. So, so that was cool. The knife implementation is a prime example that the dev took those assets from his previous game to save time without testing to see how they functioned or if they could even be used practically at all. The knife isn't even used as a tool, so it's obvious it has no actual use. Like the utter madman I am, I finished the game on normal in just 2.5 hours, and then I decided to turn around and go right back into the hard mode because maybe the game would be better? At least, that's what I thought to myself. Also, the developer mentions in the Steam page that the game is not for those that don't like a challenge because the game is intended to be a hard experience. But the balancing between normal and hard was so severely out of whack that the game became unplayable. On my first run, it took me on average 4 to 5 hits for an enemy to kill me at full health. And on hard, it took as little as 1 hit from enemies that had no right doing as much damage as they did. The map is so narrow that it conflicts with its enemies. Why does it force me to engage with these guys to get past them when ammo is so limited? I'll tell you why. Because of poor game design. Why are projectile enemies thrown at me in places that are hard to maneuver in when they can one hit kill me? I'll tell you why. Poor game design. Sure, you can use the phosphorus to evade the flying skeletons, but they are thrown at you so frequently that the game's phosphorus reserves can't even keep up with it. Taking damage from these guys is just inevitable. Perhaps one of the most positives of this game is its presentation. It's built on Unreal Engine 4, so it's not a surprise that most of the environments look appealing. Thick fog covers the map and the lightning strikes mixed with the rain soak it in a moody atmosphere. Interiors and outside areas have a favorable amount of detail. They just don't look overly compelling. The bright blues mixed with reds and browns create a nice color palette for the eyes. For a smaller indie title about a haunted cowboy town, it does have some banging music as well. The title theme was really great. Uh, looking at the watch here, it's about time I wrap this up. And if you can't tell already, because you haven't been paying attention, Hangman's Rope left me very disappointed. Even with the small asking price of just 13 Canadian dollars, I would not recommend this game. Which sucks to say, because I would like to support this guy. Developing games while easier with technological advancements, it's still an ambition that holds heavy weight. It's just so clear that this project was thrown together with very little testing, using assets and AI that were present in his first outing, and then they weren't tuned at all to gel well here. In a market that's as oversaturated as it is, it's becoming increasingly difficult to get your work out there and to be known, but producing products that are mediocre really isn't going to do anyone any favors in this area. This was somewhat of a harsh review, and I don't like giving those, but I know that the people behind this have the drive to make something unique, and while this game is a big misstep for them, they really shouldn't give up. So all this to say, if you're looking for a well-made zombie western, you're better off sticking with the famously awesome Undead Nightmare, otherwise known as the king of zombie westerns. Also, if you want to check out this guy's previous work, I'll link that video of the review in the description below, and if you like that video, maybe you should go support this guy by buying that game. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you for watching, and peace out. Okay, I don't think- oh my god, what the fuck is that?
I don't think I can climb ladders. Jesus, what the fuck? 